everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about something pretty special. We're going to be talking about 3D printed adaptive equipment. And I couldn't do this alone, so I brought in the guy behind the camera, my husband Adam, to help us go over this, as he's been extremely helpful, easy does it, Barry, <laughs> easy does it, in getting 3D printed products into my house, as he bought a 3D printer recently. I did, and uh, we've been 3D printing pretty extensively, and so we're excited to talk about how to print 3D printable adaptive equipment. Yep, it's a great way to bring affordable adaptive equipment to the masses as well as to trial and work with new adaptive equipment that you're not so sure is going to work for your individual that you're working with. Um, it's just really neat to play with these and so these absolutely. are a selection of the ones yep. that you've made. Yep, absolutely and we'll talk a little bit about these but first we're going to talk about okay where do you find adaptive equipment to 3D print and so things like this and so the first place to try to look for things that you can 3D print or adaptive equipment is a website called Makers Making Change. It's a very yes. popular uh, website. It's run by a nonprofit, and it specifically focuses on adaptive equipment. So right. all of the 3D prints and models available there are available are uh, adaptive equipment. So you can go there and check those out. Yep. And we'll give. In, they also offer another service as well, which is they'll help you get those uh, adaptive equipment models printed as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, you can go to one of the general 3D printing websites. These are uh, very popular options. Things like Thingiverse and Printables.com and Things.com. They have all all of the 3D printed things, everything from decorative stuff and figures to adaptive equipment. So you can go there and search for that. Uh, there's other also another website. I believe it's called Google. Oh, Google. Very good. Google. Yes. You can. Uh, enter uh, what you're looking for and then 3D model into Google and it will potentially find something that you may be looking for. And if you're looking at adaptive equipment specifically, it's great to search by what function you'd like it to serve. So for example, this is for one-handed nail trimming. It's called Flipper the Clipper actually. It's a great little product, but by searching one-handed uh, fingernail trimmer, you're able to come up with designs like this. So searching by function is a good way to find products that have already been designed. So these are products that you don't have to design yourself. You just have to find them and print them. Yep, absolutely. So when it comes to 3D printing things, a lot of times you'll be looking for what we call a 3D model or 3D design that's already been made by a designer and then made available online. So what, but one of the most important things when you're looking for a model and or design is to make sure uh, how easy it is to print and how do yeah. you know what to look for when it comes to 3D printing something and whether or not it's going to be easy to print. Well, there's a couple of things to look out for. Um, the biggest one is whether or not it is what they call print in place or it requires printing multiple parts. Right. Print in place is just a simple way of saying, can it be printed as one piece? And one example of that is this, which is a kind of adaptive piece of equipment to help with signing things or writing in things. Specifically for checks yep. or so documents. This was one piece. And actually the Flipper the Clipper model here, which is very popular, is also printed entirely in one piece. There was no uh, multiple hearts that need to be made. Even the hinge itself is printed all together. So um, printing in place just makes it simpler to mm -hmm. create a um, to create a 3D printed adaptive piece of equipment. Uh, you don't even have to worry about putting it together later. It's just take the model, print it, and you're done. Yep, makes it much easier. Yep. Next is make sure when you're picking out a, a model that it has good descriptions. It tells you any technical details you need to know, what kind of filament it uses, uh, if anything that needs to be set up with the 3D printer itself. Um, another good thing to be aware of is whether or not the model requires what they call supports. Um, we're not going to get into that right now, but it can require additional supports, which means slightly more filament or longer time to print. And then finally, if the model requires any hardware, so right. things like this piece of equipment that has this bolt here that printed along with it. Hardware can sometimes be tricky to print uh, in 3D printing because the tolerances, meaning the space in between things and making sure the threads and everything line up, can be very tricky. So sometimes it is better to just get solid hardware from like a hardware store versus a 3D printed one where sometimes the tolerances won't end up exact right and you'll be uh, struggling to try to get the hardware to work. So another thing to keep in mind. So, okay, let's say that you found a 3D model that you want to print. Sure. And uh, it looks like it's a good design. Absolutely. Now, how do you go about getting it printed? Yes, because once you see it online, you're like, I love this. How am I going to get it? I don't have a 3D printer. What are my options? 
Well, the probably the basic and uh, easiest option is to see if you have a family or friend who has a 3D printer. 3D printers are very available now. Um, many of them are inexpensive, so it may be that you have a family or friend who has a 3D printer at home and has some filament, and you could just reach out to them and ask if they would be willing to 3D print you a model that you found. Absolutely. And the next option, if you are in the U.S. and Canada, and I can't speak for international uh, people, but outside of the U.S. and Canada, but in the U.S. and Canada, a lot of times libraries and universities mm -hmm. and makerspaces yes. uh, will be happy to help you print a model if you found one online. Yep. Yeah, if you look at uh, universities specifically, their occupational therapy departments, so if you have an, an OT department at a university near you, they're often housing uh, 3D printers now because of how popular this has become. And they're always willing to um, help those in the community. So if you have something that you'd like them to print, reaching out is a great place to start. The local libraries and makerspaces is another great one because they're really even available in those more rural locations that may not have access to a university. Another option would be reaching out to something like Makers Making Change. So we mentioned them earlier, fantastic organization that you can actually request items be printed for you through their website. Yep, absolutely. So they have a variety of assistive devices mm -hmm. there. Not only will they show you the models, but then they have a crowdsourced um, members that you can request to have a 3D printed device printed, and then the members will reach out and offer to print it for you. And usually the only cost is potentially the cost of the materials, the filament, and shipping. potentially shipping to yep. your location. So that's a great option as well. There are also external websites and services where you can pay to have a 3D model, a 3D model, excuse me, printed and then shipped to you. Yep. Pretty simple. You upload the model that you want. You request it. They'll print it and ship it to you for a fee. Yep. Easy, but might cost you a little bit more. Yep. Absolutely. And then, of course, there's the do-it-yourself option. You can get a 3D printer and uh, and some filament and print out a model yourself. But obviously, that takes a little more. I'm shocked effort. at how quickly it was to set up and start making this kind of, printing these types of things. It's kind of a game changer if you're somebody who's really interested in this type of work. Yes, absolutely. So. Let's say, okay, you've identified a place where you want to uh, have your model printed or you're going to try to do it yourself. What's uh, a next decision you need to make? And that is what kind of plastic filament, what they call filament, which is just another name for the plastic wire, what kind of plastic filament do you want to use for your 3D print? And you're what pretty color? Nice. You get that every color on the rainbow, man. It's Always amazing. Always important to have the right color. <laughs> That's right. But this, in fact, is our nice EOT blue. Yes, color. it is. But anyway, so t choosing the type of uh, filament or plastic that you're going to use for your 3D print is going to be something that even if you reach out to an external service or somebody else, they're going to ask you. And we're going to, there's dozens of different types of plastics that you can choose from. We're only going to talk about the two biggest ones, which mm -hmm. are PLA and PETG. PLA is the biggest, uh, most popular uh, plastic filament available with 3D printing. It's easy to print with. It has mm -hmm. a low melting temperature. Uh, it's biodegradable, um, so it's very uh, printer friendly. It's very easy to work with. Uh, the downsides of it are because it has a low uh, melting point, you can't leave it in a space that where it could potentially get very warm or very hot, like the inside of a car on a hot day. Um, that plastic will melt and will start to warp if you leave it in there because it has such a low melting point. Yep. Now, versus PETG, which is the other more popular uh, plastic mm -hmm. when it comes to 3D printing. PETG uh, is a little bit uh, stronger, a little higher melting point, so it doesn't isn't susceptible to melting or warping in hot environments. However, it does. It's not biodegradable, and it's a little more difficult to work with because it uh, has a higher melting point. Right. Um, it is a little also a little more what they call impact resistant, and impact resistance is just if you're using something a lot um, and potentially yep, like in this example. This is a seat belt uh, kind of. It's a it's a button pusher. pusher. Yeah, button pusher for a seat belt. Obviously, when you're impacting like that, that's an example of why you might want to do something in pet G. And these are in fact printed in pet G. And like this, where you're going to be can. using yep. a trigger, yep. you want something strong. So this is printed in pet G. So pet G is is good for those kind of applications. The downside of it. Uh, it absorbs moisture when it's sitting, so it has to be kept in a non-humid environment or it needs to be dried out before you start printing it. And again, as I mentioned, it's not biodegradable. So you have to weigh those cons against uh, the bonuses that you get with PETG. Yep. So, so now let's talk about, all right, you've chosen your plastic, you, you've got it, maybe you uh, want to try printing it yourself. Yep. So you want to try the do-it-yourself way, you're excited, this is interesting, maybe you want to make the investment in printing more adaptive equipment. How would you go about doing that? Absolutely. 
We we have done a lot of the research right here at home, yep. as is why you're here on YouTube yourselves. So yep. the best place to find resources for how to learn something you don't know? YouTube. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. So this is exactly kind of what we did when we started 3D printing. Mm -hmm. We went to YouTube and checked out a lot. There's tons of content about 3D printing and how to 3D print things. So definitely check out YouTube. We, which of course, is why you're here. Yeah, which, of course, is why we encourage it. The other place to check out is Reddit. Reddit has a, what the, you know, if you're not familiar with Reddit, it has a subreddit or a sub forum called 3D printing. You can mm -hmm. go there and check it out. They've got a wiki that has tons of information that they've provided about 3D printing. You can go there and see people posting about it and learning lessons and just pick up information that way. It's a great resource. I would check it out. So let's say you now want to buy a 3D printer that you can use uh, for 3D printing adaptive equipment. How do you go about doing that and what, what decisions do you have to make? Well, first, you need to decide what kind of 3D printer you're going to print with. Um, there are two different main kinds of 3D printers. There's FDM and then there's Ryzen printers. I would stay strongly away from Ryzen printers if you're printing adaptive equipment. Ryzen right. printers are, uh, Ryzen 3D prints are brittle. They have a lot of different handling things because they can be sort of toxic. So you, you just don't want to use a Ryzen printer for printing adaptive equipment. You want to stick with FDM, which is what all of these uh, adaptive equipment are printed with. It's an FDM printer. Um, they tend to be the more popular version for this kind of equipment. Uh, the next is the cost. It just depends on a 3D printer uh, what you want to get, but the cost can run anywhere from just $100 for a very basic machine to $1,000 for a very expensive all-in uh, built-for-you machine. It really depends on um, what, how much you want done for you and uh, you know the, the quality and, and things like that. So the cost can, can range, but you can certainly get an inexpensive 3D Starter. printer for you know, $100 to $200. You, know, yep. you may have to... Uh, assemble it yourself and you mm -hmm. might have to fill around with the settings to get it to work correctly but you can certainly get set up and, and start 3d printing for under two hundred dollars yep um, but then you have the higher end machines that may run closer to the eight or nine hundred dollars or even thousand dollars or even more than that so what machine do we have we have a prusa which is uh the i3 mk 3s plus it's a mouthful of a name, but a we mouthful. have that, and that's on the higher end of range. That was in the seven to eight hundred dollars. Right. Um, I had to assemble it myself, but um, it is it is mm -hmm. a great machine. It's a very reliable. It machine. is an FDM machine, and it is a great machine, but it was on the higher end of of the uh, 3D printed machines available. You can certainly get one for less than that um, that can get you set up and printing um, for a little bit less. So, lastly, uh, what kind of filament? Mm -hmm. uh, you, when it comes to the filament or plastic filament that we just talked about, you'll need to buy some filament and decide which ones. Filament usually runs in the 1.75 millimeter diameter. That's the standard diameter for most uh, 3D printers um, for the basic ones. You can buy other diameters, but then you'll have to change the machine to set it up with. Um, they usually come in about 5 kilogram rolls um, you know, of PLA or PETG. Right. And they run around 15 to $25, $25 each in USD denomination. Uh, Fifteen to twenty-five dollars. We buy most of ours right off of Amazon, oh, yeah. so it's really yep. easy to get what you want yeah. quickly. Oh yes, nowadays there's tons of uh, mm -hmm. websites, um, or, or you can just go straight to Amazon and buy off of there as well. Another affordable way is to look at the marketplace, because sometimes this is a hobby that people pick up and then decide it's not for them. So sometimes you can find people who are getting rid of a large amount of. Mm -hmm. Um, filament or even a machine that's yep. in good working order and you can get yourself set up for a lower price than having to buy it all new. Yep, absolutely. And then the last thing you'll need to do if you're, you have a 3D model and you want to print it on your 3D printer is you'll need to find a slicing program. So um, the way it works is uh, you have a 3D model created in a CAD program such as Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or OpenCAD and you take those models that are generated in those programs, but they're not quite ready to 3D print on your printer yet. You need to put it in through what they call a slicer program. Slicer programs just take those 3D models and they kind of break them down into the slices that the 3D printer can then print and understands and converts it into what they call G-code. And you then take that G-code, you put it into the machine. It's all great and to me. What are you, have I lost I'm glazing you over. Yeah, okay. But Bottom line trust. is you need the right programs on your computer. And you need yes. a computer that can run these programs. I We mm -hmm. discussed this, that the programs that you need for designing 3D printing yeah. take a pretty significant hard drive, but to slice takes less. Yes, a slicing program will run on pretty much any machine. Um, but if you want to get into the actual designing of the model yourself or 
potentially you find a model online. This has happened with us, and I've, I've done this before too. Yep. You find a model online that you like, but you want to modify it slightly, like this example. I modified this to create a different kind of handle. I had to have a 3D uh, CAD program to do that, and, and I used Fusion 360 to do that. Um, Fusion 360, though, requires some better hardware than your typical slicing program. So I created this or modified it in three, Fusion 360, then carried it over to Slicer program. The Slicer program sliced it, and then I uploaded it to the 3D printer and printed it. So. Ta-da! Well, there you have it, you guys. This is a very um, introductory rundown of 3D printing adaptive equipment. There's so much more we could talk about, and we could do Absolutely. many videos, and maybe I'll invite him back. He did a pretty good job. So if you need more information like this on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT.